Hi, so we're going to get started, and sorry, I was just measuring, I hit the go button, so we're going to have to start. Um, I promised the tutorial on the Story of Fall, but I am not using the Story of Fall paper. I, am, I really need to move on to Christmas, and for this one, when I decorate it, because I'll do some decorating as I go, I'm going to use the Bow Bunny um, Dear Santa collection. I really need to get some Christmas albums out there, but we're going to make it identical. So your pages are going to be eight by eight, and we're going to start with our first page, and that is going to be our pocket page. And I'm sorry, I just have to do the measurement here. So I did six and a quarter. Okay, so you're going to cut one page, six and a quarter by nine, and then this bo your base page is going to be eight by eight. So I will also. Um, have all the measurements for you. So we're going to cut six and a quarter by nine. Let's set that aside. So I will be cutting with you as we're going because uh, I'm making this at, you know, from fresh beginning to end and I don't have everything pre-cut. So I thought we'll just do it all together. So we're going to go ahead and Put this on the nine inch side and we're going to score it one half and we're going to score it one half and go ahead and fold this up and I'm going to show you how I made that center cut and I do have a Cricut. I have all those things once in a while I'll get them out and use them. To be honest with you I like hmm, did some crooked scoring here. I like to be able to just grab my punches and do it. This card of Bella sometimes it's nice and firm but it wants to fight with me tonight. Okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the middle of my page first I'm going to make sure I didn't cut this too short no, nope. I don't usually do a lot of measuring, but on this I do. So I'm going to mark it at four. Now, how I made that middle cut on our page, so you don't have to, and you can also use a an envelope punch, or you can just you can cut this out, or you don't have to. You can leave it. Um, you can actually use any punch you want. What you do is you turn it over. So this is the EK Success, and it's I know they're available everywhere. Um, I I like to just use my pencil and just make a mark in, about in the middle. Then I take this, so your middle, it'll slide. I'm just pushing a little bit to the paper. So you can see I've lined up my middles. Now this has indents, and I consider those my sides. So I'm going to take my paper to those indents recheck my middle because I just let it slide and if you put just a little pressure you can put enough to help hold it so it doesn't slide around okay I'm going to push on the punch for a minute then I'm going to look at it just kind of eyeball it to make sure it looks straight punch it keep this because these make good tabs in your books set this aside and now you have that really cute cut out and then when you cut your pattern paper you're going to do it the same way you'll find the middle you'll cut it and then it will should fit now a lot of times I'll do a practice piece on just a um, like a cheap piece of cardstock or printer paper I cut it my pattern paper size and then I'll go ahead and um, punch it just for a template that looks off, and I don't want my pocket crooked, so I just need to. So we have our 8x8. Eight eight. I'm going to lay this down, and then I'm going to go ahead and trim my corners. I'm just mitering them off. Okay, then I'm going to lay this down, and let's get a Good. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove, let's 
bring this down so I stay in camera. I am just going to remove this corner. I'm kind of working upside down so I don't take my score tape all the way off. And I'm just going to line it up with my edge. Makes it so much easier, like I mentioned in my videos, if I have to remove my paper, then I just go behind it, make my finger or thumb. I'm going to do the same for the other side. Once again, I am just removing the corner. Line up my edges. I didn't mean to throw my floor tape on the floor, but I did. Okay, there we go. Now um, you sh you should already have some scraps because this this album took a lot more paper than. If it was a smaller so now we want to make a photo mat that will fit inside well we'll make that after we get some more scraps never mind I'm sorry but we do want to make this flat so I made the flat eight inches by five we need a half inch to score so I'm gonna cut eight by five and I already have a piece And then we're going to go ahead and score this at one half of an inch. And yes, I love my score pal scoreboard. I brought more into the store because they were selling so fast. I had to order them every time. And they're so nice to work on. They're not, uh, they don't slide around or anything. So, and I never have to move it. So we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to score it. Now I'm going to match it up, make sure I don't need to do any trimming. Then this is also where you want to decide, do you want to do your corners? Um, you can use an envelope punch board, you can use your crocodiles, which are actually my favorite and I think I will. And for my Dear Santa, it's a little more fun. I'm going to go ahead and stub it. Yeah. I want things to look a little more, you know, postage, postage stampy, if that makes sense. So I'm thinking letters to Santa, um, cute things like that inside the album. Brand kids. It's a really fun paper. And once again, so I can hide that under the paper. I'll go ahead and miter these edges. I'll get in camera one thing I'm bad about, staying in camera, sorry. So once again, I lost my score tape finger now, so it's hard to get a hold of it. I have to remove the corner. line up my other corner and there's my flap now I'm going to use the magnets I have some that actually I tore the project apart I was making an album in a box I don't do well with those albums in a box love my pages so I ripped out everything hinges pages all in one piece so I can also make a new album so it looks like that's gonna be pretty taped pretty much so I'm gonna take off that and I have to add more new score tape now on these magnets from basic gray the adhesive well it's not the greatest I admit but I love the magnets so I'm going to take that off now you need to 
maybe put your magnet down on this side because you want it far enough away from the edge that your paper won't show. Now I slide the top magnet off. I always like to add the score tape on there. Kind of glance, yep. Then go ahead and remove score tape, push down, give a little rub. Now if you're not using score tape, glossy accents or some glues will work, but not a lot of them on this metal. Then I just put another piece of score tape on top to hold it in place. And there we have that side. Now for our next, for the back of the envelope is where I put these these uh, little pop-ups. So I believe they're four by four. Oh no, they're three and a half. That's right. They're three and a half by three and a half. So we're going to cut the base is just going to be three and a half by three and a half. You need four of those. Four three and a half by three and a half. Then you need four, four and a half, four by three and a half. So four, three and a half by four, four, three and a half by three and a half. So let's go ahead and get those cut. And I'm also going to First of all, so if you want to be cutting those, I'm going to grab my paper because we want to put these down at the same time. Stickers away. Oh, that'll be perfect. So I'm going to cut my paper also to fit my page at eight or seven and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. And I don't want that one that's too decorative because we're going to be covering it. I like that. And let me get, okay, now you might have some of your scraps already, so these will work great for those uh, little squares. So let me, I know I've had some of you ask about my cutter. Um, it's huge. This is why it's not in our camera, but I'll bring it over so you can see it. It's extremely huge. I can cut four and five sheets at a time, and I never have to worry about sharpening my blade. So that's what it looks like for those of you that asked. So there's my four. See how quick I can cut them? Because I can cut duplicate layers and I never buy a new blade. There's three and a half by four. There's two of them. And that's why it's so noisy. It's self sharpening as we go along the metal bar. Okay. So I'm going to move my chair over now. Okay. Let me go ahead and ink my pages. So if you've cut your page so that you're working right along, I'm going to go ahead and ink my edges. sponge this thing's already coming apart it comes apart all over your paper when they start shredding so let me go ahead and put my paper down that's really pretty too the stripes um, even though I'm going to be putting on the little photo boxes I won't decorate them until I'm done because I like to use all my scrap paper on the small things. Okay. 
Okay. Now we can set that aside for a moment. Now we need the longer ones. So the four inch ones. And we're going to score these on the four inch side at one half. And you can decide how you want yours to open and close. They can be sideways, up and down. You'll see after we get them put together. Go ahead and fold those half inches over. score tape. I do want to go ahead and miter these corners just not as much as I would on that bigger flap so I'm just going to miter them but I'm going to do it over my garbage can. I have a goal and trying to keep my work area as neat as possible. I know that won't happen towards the end but we'll give it a good shot. Okay, now you just want to Line up your edges. Oh, and okay, I'm going to turn it over. I want to show you because if you want it to come over the edge, you're going to lose a little bit of length, but you can always trim it. You can do it that way too. I'm just going to do mine right here and then cover it with pattern paper. And even though this is just a small, I still just start with one corner. Just taught me that wasted less. You see, for some reason, this is crooked, whether I have cut it crooked or which is very possible. Being smaller, you can sometimes just hold it like that too. And if you're comfortable with putting it on without, with just taking the whole thing off, that's okay too. I do it always. Usually though, on my big pieces, there's no way. I always start with just a corner. See, I just got that one crooked. So I'm talking. That's all right, easy to fix. So we're just going to take the corner off this time. <laughs> there it now I did put magnets on mine. Um, you can also do ribbon. Make sure you put it back here, bring it up and tie it. And being Christmas, you know what? I just got, got some new Christmas ribbon in. So I think maybe, I don't know if it's going to go with, it'll go with some of my papers. I don't know if I want to use it with that, but I think I'll go ahead with the magnet. 
since I'm not sure what I'll be decorating these with. And let me feel this paper for, wait. Okay, I think I can go ahead and use my small ones uh, with, with the heavier Cartabella papers, Graphic 45. I do like to use my big magnets because they are heavier paper. And I'm only going to do one just to show you how I do it. And then we'll go ahead and lay them down. I can do my magnets later. So I do even the small ones the same way. Now I just use my quarter inch. I go over the top. That way it doesn't come up with the other magnet when I go to open the page. I check to make sure I'm far enough from the edge. So now I'd like, now you're going to want to lay down and decide you want to, how do you want yours to open. In my fall book, I had these going this way and I had these going up. But in this book, I think we'll go, I'm going to go all the same way. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to lay down your page. This is why I like to decorate this one as I go. And you can use a ruler, you can eyeball it, you can mark it. And I'm also just going to trim the bottom of my pages so they're a little more even with each other. So that doesn't drive me nuts. I mean, I'm just barely taking that sliver off. Let's see if I killed that one. Nope. Surprised. Okay. Make sure everybody's still the same length. We are. We're good. Now, see that one would have gone. Nope, it's the right way. Um, just so that I have them going all the same direction. I like to add a little arrow because I like to put things on upside down. So once you kind of get an idea of what looks good, you can measure. What I do is I just pick something on the paper as my mark and I remember it. And then I know that's where it's going to go. So. Um, if you need to measure, whatever, it's fine. I'm using the 3 8 on the back of these. I know I need to learn how to speed up my camera, but I figure too, as I'm working and if I make a mistake, maybe it's the same mistake you've made and you were just going to throw your paper away and you can see a lot of times I fix them. So, I mean, I hope this um, doesn't drive you nuts. Um, So I just want to put this one down just on my right just to make sure. Okay, the 
can just open it once you put it down. And if you already put your magnets down, then they'll, yours will stay. Now, I want to make sure we get pretty much the same distance from the edges. And it actually is a little bit easier to work with when you have your your magnets on there. Let's move to our next one. I'm going to center it with this one because it's has the magnet. Wow, they're being noisy on Facebook and I thought I'd turn that off. Sorry if you're hearing all that in the cam with the camera picking up the noise. It's just all those the notifications. And that's how we did how I did this page kind of crooked I know so there is our pocket um, I don't like to make the tags till we have more scrap paper and until it's on the hinges so we know exactly how far down we can go I, I know it's about a half inch but you know things not always don't always work out that way so there's page one and for page two I made the big belly band with the two pockets in it and so these pockets um, were three and three quarters but that's not what you're going to cut it. I have glue all over. Sorry, I'm just getting measurements in my head. Okay, so first we're going to do our page and the belly band. Then we're going to cut these two pockets that are underneath inside there. And, um, and then we'll cut these little mats. We'll have enough. So let's go ahead and make our page the 8x8. Eight eight. And did I... Yes, I did. So I'm also going to pick out the paper that I'm going to use to decorate because I put the belly band under the paper. So it's got to be 9 inches by 4 inches and an 8 by 8 page. So we'll go ahead and get those cut. I'll leave the book open so I can just look at it. First I'll cut my page and then you'll have your, your belly band. Now remember, your first page is 8 by 9. Then you have to have 8 by 8 to go on top. And then 4 by 9 for your belly band, and you should just have a piece uh, left over from that 8 inch piece and then just cut it down to 9. Okay, on to scoring. So we're going to score it on the 9 inch side at one half and this is how you'll make all your pages. 
for this one. This is the style we're doing with the side pocket. And then one half inch on each end of your belly band. And I will also cut, oh wait a minute, we're going to have to cut the paper, but we're not put, that's right, we don't want to put the belly band down until I build those little pockets. See, I don't write my patterns down. That's why I have to stop and think. So we can go ahead and construct our page. Do that first. And the top end, or whichever end will be your top, go ahead and miter that corner. And let's go ahead and add the top to make our page. Even everything up. And do it for this side. Okay, let's set that aside for a minute. Go ahead with the belly band. You can go ahead and, and score up your edges. And then you should have the scrap pieces of paper that we just cut with um, from. Okay, I went ahead and cut um, two pieces, and you're going to need two pieces of four and a half by four and three fourths. And then we're going to score them on the four and, a, let me move that, four and three quarter inch side, you're going to score each side. Well, you're going to score all three sides at half inch. Turn it to the four and a half inch side and score it at the bottom. Now I'm going to go ahead and just real quick, I want to bring up my sides. I want to double check. Like I said, I don't um, write things down. Open that. I'm just making sure I did the, uh, because you want these, okay. Great. I did it right. So four and three fourths by four and a half. And just like you would make a pocket is what we're doing. We're going to use our adhesive. thing I want to look at. I really should have taken pictures as I was making the book. Oh, okay. That's what I did. Um, I'm just barely taking off the edge there just so I get any excess glue or tape. Not a big deal if you don't want to, but I also do want to just take a little off, as you can see, so that it um, doesn't hang over the edge anywhere. And then I'm going to go ahead, do my corners, somewhat in a rounded, when we cut them off, like that, turn your scissors, turn your scissors. 
and then we can go ahead and put our pocket together. However you like to put yours together. Okay, now on the belly band, right now, even though I took the tape off, I am just going to lay it here for a moment. I'm going to get my other one ready. And I'm just going to mark the edges there. Don't want to put my pocket on any further off that edge. So line it up now with the bottom. And it's a little crooked. I'm going to butt this next one right up to that one. And then I can see it's hanging over a little bit. So if you want, you can take your, your scissors, I mean your blade and a knife. I'm going to just use my cutter. And I'm going to straighten that edge up just like that. Now you want to go ahead and um, you don't have to. You can put this down right now. I really like my edges underneath my paper. And I, I know that this one is going to be next to the one we just did. So I'm going to use the coordinating paper, which is the stripe. It's, I think it's really pretty. I will get that one cut. I'm going to bring this up because I keep hitting my head on it. I'm going to move, I have to move off because my sponge is starting to shred and it gets everywhere. Just kind of center, decide how you want your now. What I do, you can do a couple of different things. You can put score tape here and then just turn it over, or you can actually just tape it down. Choice is yours. So I am going to just put that down like that, but I need to turn it because we've been doing some moving. Oh, make sure your pockets are going the direction you want them to go in. I did want mine to go this way. Forgot to tell you that, so, but it's easily fixed. Now, when I turn it over, so I still have room under there but it won't be seen. And you really don't want any more, I didn't want any more tabs or anything underneath there. Um, I wanted it in the back, just hidden, just to begin with. So with this one. 
and then just apply your adhesive as normal. Okay, just lost my page there. Um, I was gonna say, wait a minute, what am I putting this on? Okay. Now you can also have your belly bands with this pocket go up. So you can have your tags come out that way if you want. That's the nice thing. Now you have those cute little hidden pockets. And then we're going to make the two tags. And I'm going to go ahead and grab. And they were four and a half by three and a half. And you should have plenty of those scraps. I won't mat them until I get more scraps. So let me go ahead and cut. I do like to do. Some of this minimal, you know, minimal, minimal work that kind of drives you nuts when you get done with an album, but you got to go back and you have to do all of this. Oops, I'm looking for scraps, so we want three and a half. By four and a half, and then these will fit right in here. And then you also have these cute tabs that you can use. And you can cut tons of these with the way I showed you with just putting it in halfway. So there's our little pockets. We can also cut the corners and I think I will on these. Give them more of a tag look because I'm, I'll be doing you know, more ribbon and stuff, making it a little more Christmassy. But I love having the tags in here because it's such a camouflage and it's a fun little item. Now you can also make the pocket bigger and longer and have one long tag. So there's our page for that. Now the back of this, I believe, is where we're going to start our corner pockets. So um, you will need the full sheet of cardstock and we're will make these pockets. So let's get another piece of cardstock. And I want you to cut this at eight and a half by eight and a half. Okay now for this Sometimes I'll use the big one, but so I can show you better on camera. I'm going to take my eight and a half by eight and a half. And just to help you out, to figure out when you're doing a full page um, corner pocket like this, you want it to go top to bottom. Well, you, you're going to be scoring the half inch on each side. So you just cut your paper a half inch wider and longer than your page. That's how I figure it out. Now I'm going to put corner here and I'm going to line it up so the corner, my cutter will come down perfectly from corner to corner. That should do it. Now you'll have to make a few adjustments um, before we put it down. And then also, let me show you something. Um, you can do a lot of fun things with this. So you can have your pockets going this way and this way, or actually you can if you don't want them on both pages, still take two of these, score them the same way, and you can make a pocket like that. You'll add, just put them together in the middle. So you can also have, how did I do that once before? Oh, they can also go this way. And so if you want your pockets this orientation, or do you want them open like this? So, you know, you can decide how you want them. 
So either way would look really cute. I'm just going to go ahead and still continue on and do it that way for the tutorial for you. But I want you to know there's a lot of things you can do. Now, one thing to keep in mind. Okay, you've got to remember what sides are you going to score on. I've mentioned this before, and I'm not kidding. If you are a true ADA adult, you have to mark things like this because it's just the way we are. Now for this one, I haven't made that page yet, but I'm going to mark. I'm going to be doing the scoring on these sides. So I just make the little tick marks. It helps me to remember the orientation of my scoring. Now it's this side, but it fits better in my scoreboard. This side. And I'm going to score it at one half. Before I score again, I always like to look back at the side I marked. But again, it fits better upside down. So I want to go, oh no, this one will be better up, right side up. See, I'm sorry. So if you're watching my tutorials, I know you're putting up with a lot with me. And I'm sorry. Um, I'm one of those older adults that was born in the era when we didn't get to have Ritalin. We didn't have those medicines, so we learned how to adjust things and do them, especially as adults. My husband would come home and I'd have, well, you can only imagine if you have an ADD child. Imagine a wife with four children. And uh, I had to learn how to handle these things actually kind of funny sometimes he still teases me okay let's go ahead even though I don't have the the other page done I'm just going to go ahead and do it with my score marks now I'm going to make sure the orientation is the correct way I'm going to have it go this side now as you can see we're going to have To trim those corners. Let me check something. Oh, actually, hmm. what did I do here? Put this underneath and see something. Well, let me go ahead and trim off my corners. I'm going pretty deep. As you can see, just basically another angle. wondering if I cut my paper nine by nine and I may have it's not gonna go top to bottom please don't kill me but I'm okay with it not going top not going over to this edge to that edge so it looks like we should have cut it nine by nine sorry but this is gonna be okay too so if you want it to go edge to edge Cut another one at nine by nine or make smaller pages. Just kidding. Um, leave me a nasty gram that I made you waste a sheet of paper. I understand. It's okay. But I'll just keep going here because it'll still work. I need to cut that off. Usually I don't miter those corners until but I needed to see what I had done. So I do miter them with the tape. Get that off of there. Now as you can see, I didn't go clear up into that edge because you don't want a hole. Sometimes you'll get a hole right there if you take it too deep. Now the thing is, I keep a bag, so if I have a bunch of things that I've cut, put score tape on, and it wasn't the right size, I put them in the bag, because you're always going to make another album, another size, and that's more than likely it's going to fit, so don't ever throw anything away. So we're going to match up these corners. And no, this is not hard to put your pattern paper down in there. If you've never made these corners, 
um, your pattern paper will slide right in there. So it'll be fine when you go to mat your page. So there we'll have that corner. We'll make our next page and it'll come up like this. Even though it doesn't match, you could run lace across there also. But I, it's fine. I think it looks just fine. There's no problem there. So let's make another page. Let's go ahead and cut um, our next piece at 9 by 8. So we can set this one in our finished pile. So we're moving right along. So I'm going to cut it at 8 by 9. And we'll need a top piece that is 8 by 8. And we're going to score our ends at half. And I do want to thank those of you that come back to watch the tutorials. That means you are able to put up with me. I appreciate that a lot. And my mess ups, my idiosyncrasies. Okay, let's go with our score tape. And we'll go ahead and miter those edges. I um, wanted to get this tutorial done because I do need, like I said, to get a, some Christmas albums out there and on my shelf in the store. But next week, too, is my my 31st anniversary. And so I promised my husband that I would be available for a day or two. And I knew I wouldn't get some tutorials done. So that's why I got this one done and up quick. It forces me also to, to get this album done made. The more I can get made, the better, the better it is. Oh, it's being stubborn here. Check your, make sure your hinge is the right way. And then make sure we're putting this down on the right edge so that you get that look. Well, I mean, I need to make sure I do it the right way. So let's go ahead. Do those corners. Remember, don't go too deep. In fact, don't go at all. Just stop at that edge. And then I like to check it because sometimes you still have to, to miter this edge, but it looks okay you don't want it sticking up the top. Okay. Can get things lined up. Have our corners. Now we need to turn it over 
Let me grab the book and we will go ahead and do, let's see what page. And the page on the back, oh, okay, you will want to get out your designer paper because we're going to split it. So this is kind of a new uh, technique that I'll show you and it's really fun. So for this one, whatever paper you're going to use, you can even do it with a, you know, a, with plain. It doesn't have to be really decorated. Um, these are cute. This is really fun paper. So let me see what I'm thinking might be a good one. Those are tags. Oh, that's cute. Oh, you know what? That's that's really cute too. The stripes would work. Bleh. Can't talk. The stripes would work really well. So just decisions, decisions. The red and white. Yeah, the red and white. This is cute paper. I am so glad I brought it into the store. Okay, so let me cut my page at my map page at eight by eight. Now, let's set this aside. So what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to take actually this line right here and my other one didn't have the diagonal line, but this is really good. Um, maybe this one. So what I'm going to do first is you're going to need your crocodile um, or a hole punch that um, that will reach in pretty far. So I'm just setting it. Your crocodile has measurements, so I'm bringing it all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to put it where I want to be cutting. I'm going to poke a hole. This will also stop. This will stop um, your paper from tearing. It helps. So I'm going to do it again to this side. Now, let me get my ruler. Check my blade. And I'm going to turn it this way. I'll bring this down so you can see. I'm going to line up my ruler. What's great is this paper has this for me to look at. If you don't have um, some lines already on your paper, you're, you'll still be fine. Just line it up. Now start inside that first hole. Hold this down. Ah, and don't move your ruler if you can help it. But I did. I have a chip in it, but it's going to be okay. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. And actually, don't don't push as hard as I was and go back over it. That's part of the problem. I try to get it all in one pass. Oh, and I think. Okay, because I've done that. Let me get an idea. Okay, so now I'm going to move down here. So what I'm going to do is make my opening just bigger. Cut it again. Boy, I think it's my blade. I'll try my smaller one. Nope, we're just going to break this baby off. Okay. So, we're just going to have a nice big hole here. Hmm. 
more like a slit. It's okay, Santa needs a mailbox. It's just kind of hard to see right here. Now, I'm going to turn this because I, I want to now even this up. Can't. All right, we're just going to try this. The piece does not want to come off. There we go. Now, it's a little off down here. I don't know if you can tell, but it's okay. What I'm going to do is when I make my... Um, Things to hang down. I'm only going to make it, I'll make it so, it's going to be this way. It's in the middle and actually I'll put something really cute over this. So my slit will be here but we'll have, um, I will have like, let's see. <laughs> well these aren't very big but we'll make something. We'll put some flowers. Um, a sound is mailbox. We'll get that all worked out so that will be uh, definitely camouflaged. And then the tags will come, my tag will come out down here. So we will work it or we won't. Sorry, I can't stop the video and go back, otherwise we've lost the pocket that I just made. So, I decided that this is going to fit on my other pockets we just made. Oh yes, that is not a waste. It'll be cute if it's perfect once we trim it down. So, we'll try and do it right this time. So, go ahead with the crocodile. We're going to decide which direction. Again, I'm going to punch the holes and I'm going to do it right this time. Okay. You have a nice sharp blade. Make sure you have a sharp blade so you don't do what I just did. And on the crocodile, I did use the smaller hole. And I'm going light this time, and I'll go over it twice. Yay! That's much better. Ooh. Oh, I did. Okay, much better. Sorry about that, but see, sometimes when there's a boo-boo, you learn from it. So, you'll want to go ahead, because I'll show you how you put uh, this page down. It is a little different um, when it comes to your score taper, your adhesive, which you got it. I've learned more than once. You don't tape it or you lose your pocket on the bottom. So, I'm going to go ahead with my, I want to ink it now. Okay, page. Now it's going to go down this way. So you obviously want it's like pencil, but it's not. It's actually part of the. <laughs> so you you want this part uh, down, but you want to make sure your pocket is usable, usable. So. We're going, going to go around the outer parts and we're going to tape the top, but we're not going to tape the bottom. 
It's such a cute side too. So I'm actually doing it now. So I'm going to go right across there. This is the top part. Then I'll go around the perimeter of the paper. just for extra hold. And make sure you turn the page over the correct way. Make sure your tape part is at the top. Otherwise you have lost your pocket. You know, so it's ah, together as much as possible before it sucks down onto your paper. There we go. I'm going to turn it sideways so I can have a hold of it. It is a little more difficult to work with because they do want to separate and misbehave like it's doing now. Um, I really don't know why this is giving me so much trouble this time. Probably because I am on camera. Wow, this score tape just is wanting to suck down faster than I'm ready for it to. That is in the paper. And those weird marks kind of drives you nuts, you know? And there are little marks. Okay. Now, um, let me show you how you make your little, the tag. So you've only got um, a small, you don't have a large amount. Now, if you want to come up higher, your pocket can be. So we're going to be able to go in at about four inches because I'm going in at a different angle so and we don't want it to sit straight so I'm going to cut a piece of cardstock see what I have for scraps first because you have I need it to be eight inches long and oh here we go four inches wide and I'm going to cut mine at eight and if you did the same, well, it'll be a little different depending on where you cut your paper. I'm going to lay this here, score it at four. And then I want my corners to match. And I won't map this yet, but I, I'll show you where I put the magnet. So I do want it to come in at an angle, just like my other one. So I want that off-centered look. So now what I did was put a magnet on each one of these flaps. And I did use a big magnet. And so when it's inside, it will stay shut. And then you can decorate uh, the rest of the page however you like. I don't know if you guys can see that. It just it looks like a little signature up there and it's driving me crazy. Hmm. And um, then you'll have your little pocket. And I believe this one might be going the different way. Oh, no. Oh, it is. Um, the reason this is going, this sits a different way is I cut... So it would be like if I cut it this way. Maybe I did. Oh my gosh. You guys, you're going to think I'm just crazy tonight. Let me see something. I had my page upside down. 
Oh, okay. That is right. It does go this way. Okay. See, always check the orientation of your paper. But it, I did put it on correctly. I'm surprised with all the trouble I had. And then I put in uh, a few of the tags from the line. So you can put whatever you like in there. They will be smaller. And there is your third page. Yay, we're actually moving along. So for here, I have the waterfall. And on the back side, I did the big... Fold out. So we will be making that. And then we'll make this page and this page. And these are some fun little pockets. So if you want, let's go ahead and... Um, I'm just making sure you don't have to do anything. But no, go ahead and make three more pages that are eight. Two more pages by, for eight by eight because there's only five. So we need to make two more eight by eight pages. Let me get the camera back over here. Okay, I went ahead and made my two pages, and then I did go ahead and cover this one. This is going to be our waterfall, so you're going to want to cut one paper that is six by seven. This is going to be the base of our waterfall, so I did want to go ahead and cover my page, and then I cut four of the six by, I cut four six by six. It only takes one sheet of paper. Go ahead and cut it in half and then cut it in half again. So you'll have four of those. We'll set those aside. And then what we're going to do is we're going to score these for the, um, the waterfall. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just gonna move that out of the way. And we're going to score these and it doesn't matter which side because they're all six. But you're going to want to score them at one half. Hold on. Why does it seem like I've been doing so many waterfalls? No, it's just the half inch. Whoops. So we will score all four of them. Go ahead and um, furnish your edges with your bone folder. My fingers are still freezing. I was outside and it's getting pretty cold today. It's only in the 40s. Going to go ahead and put the adhesive on all four of mine. Now we'll need the six by seven inch sheet. And we're going to start with our first one right at the top. I'm going to make sure everything's cut. And it's not. I need to trim up my base page here for some reason. Just a hair. Because once you put your waterfall pages down, it's pretty hard then to straighten it. Okay. So I'm just going to remove... the corner. My fingers are so cold, so that's why I'm even with the smaller 
page just removing a corner because I don't want to mess them up where my fingers are still thawing out. Now I always turn things backwards for me to work on. It just makes it easier. Now you're just going to butt that up against the edge of where that half inch ends and now your new one starts. Gonna hold that down and go behind. Once again, I'm going to line it up. But we're going to cut this one. Let me see. Like I need to sharpen that up on the edge and a little bit more. I hope I didn't cut that off too much. This was just an extra piece I had in my scraps, so. I think I did. Let me just quickly, sorry, cut this one. pieces of flap for a different project or uh, I can't remember if we have any other flaps on this one I have to look at my book again just really think that this one sheet of paper may have just been the whole, I cut the whole thing a little off. I'm just going to help it go over more where I want it to be. And then our last one. Now on this particular design, I did it where the top and bottom actually meet, so I didn't have any extra hanging down because of the side of our page, so I didn't want, I didn't want to have any more hanging down. So there is that waterfall. Now on this one, I did that little band that came up and held our, is holding the pages down. So for that, again, I just took a scrap piece and I cut it to, and you can cut yours any length you want or any width. I'm gonna go two and a half. And to be honest with you, it won't matter right now with the length because what I'm going to do is I'm just putting it down, getting an idea of where I like it, how high up I want it to come then I'm just going to center it a little bit more and I'm just going to bend that over that edge. And now I can cut that off so I don't have so much on the back. I don't know, I left about an inch, inch and a half. There's no real 
particular measurement here. The only thing is when you fold it that way, you may not get quite a um, clean. So I just turn it over and now see you do have that clean edge as if you had scored it. So once again, just line it up on your page. Make sure and it's not quite as straight as I'd like it. So I'm going to go ahead and lay it down. And just above that, I'm going to do a, a new score mark. Because you can see it is off. But because we left plenty there, we have plenty to work with. And slip it back on. Once it's where you like it, then again, you can lift up your flap, put your score tape on the bottom side, and on this one, I'm going to just go a little bit close to that score mark. No hard and fast rules, just so it's secured down. And then for this one, you will want to use a large magnet, or if you don't have the large ones, I would definitely use two small magnets and put one here and one here, uh, because you want it to hold down this whole thing. Okay. So we want to put our first magnet down on our flap. It's just going to come off. So I'm just, just going to let it come off. Use my score tape. I know I mentioned this before. It's kind of the frustrating thing with these magnets. So I just want to put that down in the middle, leaving room on all sides to hide under your paper. There we go. Now I'm just going to remove that. Secure that down. And I still add my score tape when I'm using the adhesive if you're lucky enough to have it stick. And just pull that to the side. So secure down your magnet and there you go. Now we'll go ahead and uh, put more score tape on the back or your adhesive so we can put it down on the center of our page. So I'm stick a little bit in the middle so it will have some staying power. Okay, now this is, you can put this anywhere you want, down, over, I'm just going to um, kind of match it up so it's centered somewhat. And I'll probably just use the top of the circles. Just checking side by side. Sometimes I like to put it up here and make sure I have the same amount on each side or close to it. Okay, though. I can't seem to find. Hope I didn't throw my little Cricut tool in the garbage that I used to remove the tape backing. But it's not sitting on my desk, so it may have rolled off into my garbage can. Okay, what 
you get your tape or your adhesive on there. Keep your fingers under there until you're ready to let go. And once you feel it centered, let go. And then I'm going to go ahead and burnish it down. Now, I am going to just go along each one of these flaps since there is tape back there. I usually do it with that little Cricut tool. Actually, I can use the spatula one because these had those nice rubbered ends. And it doesn't seem to damage my paper. And there we have our waterfall. And that will be all ready to decorate. And I'll probably use the coordinating, just some, I um, had the six by six pads that go with this. So I'll use the six by six on this. And for the back of the waterfall, is, oh, that's right, this is our big fold out. So on on this, because we're you have to do some cutting shorter in order for all your pages to go in, you're going to need to cut four of these flaps that are four inches. I did, it looks like four and seven and seven eighths. So they're all going to be four and seven, seven eighths, or you can do four by eight and trim them as you go. The thing is, if you want, if you want this one to be the same length as your page, go ahead and cut this one four by eight. Mine is off just a little bit to accommodate the fold over. Um, and to be honest with you, I think that was something that, that's right, I'm going to go ahead and cut three three flaps, four wide, seven and seven eighths long, and then I'm going to cut one flap that is um, the four by eight. And I can't remember how I had these. There we go. Now I'm gonna cut a four by eight, and then three four by seven eighths. Don't cut them yet. You're going to do, I gave you the wrong measurements. They have to be four and a half because we have to score them a half inch. So I'm going to cut one four and a half by eight and three four and a half by seven and seven eighths. I have my four cut. So after you cut the four and a half, then we're going to go ahead on the Four and a half side here, we're going to score a half inch down for our flaps. So I have three of them that are four by seven and seven eighths. And one that's four and a half. Yeah, they're all four and a half, sorry. I said four. Four and a half by eight. So my four and a half by eight is just a hair longer and we still may have to adjust these. So what we're going to do is do a little placement first. You always, when you're doing these kind of flaps, need to do placements. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my corners on all of these. Oops, hold on. So my husband came down, started talking, I turned it off, and I cut one too short. So let's try this again. Let me make sure of which one it is. Sorry about this. Cut my third one. I mean, uh, score my fourth one. And like I said, you still, we still may have to adjust these a little bit. Let me get these all together. Which I can only do three at a time with my cropper. Let's bring this 
over so we're more in camera. Yeah, I probably should have waited to do this, but it's okay. Even if I have to cut it, that's the nice thing with the crop. When you're using that, you can um, cut it and still redo it. I'm getting my brain's getting a little ahead of me today. So. Now I'm not going to put any score tape on these yet. Just in case I need to trim the, the sides to make them the hair shorter. Okay, so let's take our page, making sure, and for some reason I keep picking up this one lone magnet. Okay. Now I have one that's just a hair longer. Should have one that's a hair longer anyway. And that would be oops, like this one. So we're going to put that down first. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just laying it loosely there because we want to see how well this is going to fit when we go edge to edge. This is where we might have to um, trim these just a hair. Shorter because we want room, see, this to close. So I'm going to go ahead and take another sixteenth of an inch off the ends. Just a little and before I do all of them so what I'm going to do is match this piece up with this edge so I want that on the end now holding this down and matching that up what I'm looking for okay there's about that 1 16th so will my page close okay that's great it will so that tells me on all of these, I need to go ahead and just take off another sixteenth of an inch, very small amount. Just enough for it to close. And I'm going to just fix my corners really quick, the one I just cut. my shorter ones so I'm putting them off we're going to start with this one which will be on this hinge side okay how do you lose score tape there we go and you will want to miter the corners Just a little bit. All right, there we go. Just matching my corner, matching my bottom corner. So we know our next one, uh, it really shouldn't matter, it should fit.
with that closing room. Perfect. So my studio here is down in our basement, which is awfully great in the summer, but when the temperatures dip at 40, I can't can't keep the temperature constant. If I turn my little space heater off, I start to freeze, so I had to turn that back on. So again, I'm just going to remove a little bit. Now on the opposite corner is where I want to match. So I'm taking it to the far corner. Actually, I have it upside down so I can match that corner. I'm trying to find a happy medium so I stay in camera with you. And keeping it even there at the bottom. As you can see, it'll close nice. No uh, hitting against that page is what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and turn. And now we're going to match up to the top of the page, the corner, and we're looking for the same thing again. Will it close nicely? It will. There's that nice, probably one eighth of inch gap because I took that other sixteenth of an inch off, and that's what you want. If you don't, it'll be all bunched and it won't close and lay flat. So this is a really nice way to add extra space. It's like putting an addition on your room. You're adding space to this page for more pictures. Let's miter those corners. And remember, we want to match our corner up at the top. Don't match it to where you've just put the flap or you're going to end up short up here. So I do have to turn this. So I'm going to turn it and then put my flap there on the corner. Checking it as I pull off the score tape. Cover. So there we have so far, and you know, you can even start stop with three. And I'm going to move on though. We want this fourth one now. With the fourth one, it's a little different. You want to center, you want to do more of a centering so that you have equal space or as close to on each side. Now, you may find that you have to cut this very last one just a hair. And I am going to cut mine just a hair. I mean, just a sliver. You can see, just a tiny sliver came off of that end. So I will have to fix my corner again. And there we now should be able to center it. Left to right. Make sure that will close nice and that will close nice. So that's very good. always going out of the camera on you. Okay, I am going to go over my garbage can though, just to miter the corners. Corners are mitered. Now, I'm just going to remove a little bit because so I want to make sure that I do get this centered. So I'm starting on the end that I have not taken off the score tape put it down and pretty much tell. You can tell where about a sixteenth of an inch is. And I'm putting pressure down on the right hand side. Okay, 
once it's where I want it. And I'm going to just kind of walk you through something fun. So another fun thing you can do is cut another set of these pages. It does take a little more work and then you can actually put another set down and it really comes out uh, comes out really cute. Um, so when you open it this way and this way and this way, so if you cut another set, just make sure you cut them only at about seven and seven fives, then you can have another set open. That makes sense. If you've ever made the explosion boxes, you can turn your page basically into like an explosion box page. That's really fun. This is going to be a little tight there on that end for some reason. So anyway, there is that, uh, the explosion page. Now on the explosion page, you'll, you will want a magnet. And the best thing to do is probably put one, you know, I think I actually used two. I think I used one up towards the top and one up the bottom. And I'm going to do that again. I know it seems like a lot of magnets, but it's worth it. Especially when you're giving a gift or it's for your own family, you want, you really want it to um, stay closed. And you've got the two flaps or you got to decide what look are you going for. That I call more of a puzzle look like I did in my book. But even so, you can refold it. Not a problem, but if you're setting down your magnets, you want to check your orientation. So you may want a top flap open where it flips up and then it looks like the puzzle page. Totally, totally up to you. And so I could have gotten that just a little shorter, but it's okay. So I'm going to do bottom up, side, top, and that way, just like in my other one. And I am going to use the big magnets. I am going, this is a very heavy page that this is probably with that waterfall on the other side, one of the heaviest pages in your book, but I think it is also one of the most fun and interesting, especially with Christmas on a Christmas album. Um, I wanted them both to be on the same page front and back. So what I'm going to do is, so we want to put it in far enough that we're going to have enough room to hide, of course. Move the score tape. Now this one you want to hit just about in the middle if you're using two. So I'll put my magnet down there first. And really, um, we're only going to use one more of the big magnets on our pages, and then I'm going to use some on the cover. So it's not like I used a ton, per se. If I was using smaller magnets, I would probably use more. They hold pretty good, but when you're doing bigger pages like this, I don't think they're strong enough. And so I'm going to go ahead and push that down. I may not, yeah, I didn't think that would stay. That's why I tape my magnets. And use the score tape. There we go. Now you have the holding power of two magnets and your pages will stay down. And another thing, if you're good at cutting slits, you can actually have your pages interlocked. You just have to make them a little longer or you can use swing tabs, but I did actually try swing tabs on this design and I can't seem to make them strong enough to hold this. So there we have that really fun pop out page and the waterfalls on the other side. So we can put that now in our finished uh, constructing page pile. And then our next one, we just have the pocket and then on the back side will be this other fun flap with these three little pockets so for this flap I mean for this pocket I just grabbed one of my scraps so it doesn't have a particular width 
actually it's just one of the scraps that I liked um, and I thought it was wide enough because you, you're going to end up with quite a few that you're going to use for tags and different things. Let's see if this is wider. Not really. Um, you know what? I'm going to show you. We're going. I'm going to go ahead and do. Whoops! Turn this the right way. My hinges. Um, I'm going to have actually two pockets. So we're going to make two. And because these aren't very deep, and I want to have two, so I'll put two pockets on. If you only want to do one, you'll only have to do the bottom one. So I'm going to use two exact pieces from my scraps that are four inches by nine. So let me cut those down. Now, on if you're going to do the double pocket, and I know there's lots of ways to do them. I've tried all of them, and I think some of them are more work than they're worth. They still didn't lay nice and flat like uh, the designer had said they would. And so I just went back to doing them my way. I'm always willing to try easier ways. So if you ever have an easy idea, just shoot me a message. I'd love to try it. Anything to save our time when we're making albums. So on this one, you're only going to score on each end one half of an inch. On the next one, you'll need to do all three pockets. Now, I mean all three scores. This is if you want, I better explain this. You don't have to do it this way. This is if you want one big tag that can go, see this is going to enable you to put a tag all the way down through that other pocket so you can put a bigger tag um, and then it will stop with this one because that's where you'll have the the fold um, you can still do them both if you just want a smaller one on top also go ahead and score this but you're going to make it the same way So I'm going to just fold up these ends, my tools back so they don't end up where I can't find them. And again, I'm just going to score these sides. Uh, I'm going to go, we can go ahead and score the bottom. I mean, yeah, fold it up and burnish the bottom. Mostly, I want to check the sides. Okay, now I need to decide exactly where, because our the pocket's going to overlap. Now, how much of a space do I want? So I put this pocket down, and I'm holding it. There. So I'm going to hold this, and then I'm going to just kind of move this one to see you do want it to be under a little now if you bring this up this high see how high it is at the top and usually I like a little more room to be able to grab a tag that looks good so you're going to be able to put a shorter tag here and then a long one all the way through you can even go as far as putting four and five of these pockets what you do is you just cut these um, the, this one's at four, so you'd cut the next one at three and a half. If you want to have more pockets, then you just slide this down. Then you make another one that goes across here, so you could actually turn this whole page into pockets just by doing each page, like I mean, each pocket where you just crease it on the sides. And it's not going to be bulky. So once you decide where you want it and how many you want, Then what I do is I'm just going to move that up a hair, mark the bottom because that's where I want this pocket to be. Go ahead and score tape. And let's miter these corners, just the top. No need to do the bottom. I'm going to turn it sideways so I can match it to 
to the side. There's my line. How on earth could that be crooked? Hold on. Or it looks crooked to me. Okay, now we're going to match it up to that edge. Now you'll just take your next one and put it down the same way. Sorry, I am... Actually, I just want to cut that and make it a design, but I won't on the video. I'll do my next one that way. Sorry, this is what happens. I'm making things, and that's when things come into my head, and they're very spontaneous, and I want to just change the design, but we need to stick with the basics. I know, because you just want to you need to learn how to do this one. So I'm going to miter the corners over the garbage, and then again... Let's just go ahead and do our corner cuts. Move one side, both sides, whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm just going to match the bottom corners. Match these bottom corners. So if you're just going to do the single pocket, of course, you'll just do this bottom one. Okay. So there's our uh, pockets for that page. We'll have on this one, I'll have that double pocket. Now we want to do this flap for our last page. So, again, the pocket is four and a half by eight, so you need to cut one four and a half by eight piece. Get mine cut here. I think this piece might be eight. Awesome. And then on the four and a half side, we're going to score half inch down. Now I put this, I didn't quite put this um, all the way to the back. I wanted it to look like that because I put a piece of this wood, wood looking trim behind there. So I put it down an inch on my page. So I, I will go ahead and, and just kind of mark where that's going to go. And turn this over this way so we have a one inch top and bottom for my guide. Or tape. And let's cut the ends. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and now put this one down. And I am just taking part of that corner off until I get get it lined up and centered to make sure 
It's not going to look crooked on me. Now, I need another magnet or whatever. You can still use um, a different closure, but to be honest with you, if you want your tags to stick out, see, I made it so that this little pocket was even so my tags would stick out. And so you probably won't get much of a different closure if you don't you won't be able to have a closure with that. It'll be a magnet. And then also we're going to make the double pocket that goes underneath here. So, I can see something, what did I do? Um, the reason, too, I use the large ones on this because the pocket actually went on top of the magnet and it still was able to catch because I used the large ones. Okay, now, how I make these pockets, just to give you an idea, how I figured out how to put three of them on here, space, I actually took my width, or my length, which was eight, and I divided it by three. And that's how I figure out when I want to do other pockets and what size they should be. Just to give you an idea, if you're ever trying to figure out how to put an even amount of paid, uh, pockets the same size, just whatever your length is, divide it by three, and then you'll know what you need to make about what to make to fit. So, we are going to cut these pockets We're going to cut these at three and a half wide by three and a half long. So we need three, three and a half by three and a half. And you should have plenty of scrap over in your pile. Got these all from one strip. Now we're going to score the three sides so it, it doesn't matter. Just so you have three sides scored, two sides and a, a bottom there. Since we're working with the square. Like I said, I I know I've mentioned this in other videos. I used to score my next half inch over here, but see, this is even going to be, if I did that, it would be off. And I used to, I would get so frustrated, I couldn't figure out why my one side of my pocket was off. I thought I was cutting the paper crooked, and actually it's not, because if your paper's off, just, oh my gosh, even one thirty-two of an inch, just a hair, and you're scoring over on this side, then you're going to have a bigger risk of your paper being off or your pockets. So I just bit the bullet and just score always over on my flat, just right where it starts. I know I'm having an exact half inch every time that way. 
So I'm going to go ahead, fold up these pockets. Let me grab my page here. Once again, just like when we made that pop out. Okay. Now, oh, you can make these longer too if you want. I forgot. Um, but I wanted just cute little tags. And I'm going to lay them all down. I want to make sure that I've allowed plenty of room. And you can, you know, even then like readjust and once you get the hang of making these because you're using your scrap paper you can even make them a hair bigger if you want longer wider the full length of the page Oops. okay make sure everything will fit on here make sure we cut right we did looks great now let me get a piece of pattern paper so we can see what's going on under here. What I'm basically doing is putting each one of these up at the top. I'm checking that they're the same length, that I cut everything the way I'm supposed to. Because you don't want one pocket to be off. Looks good. I think we're good to go there. So we can finish Bringing up the bottoms, adding our score tape. And we can lay them down on the page. So I'm going to turn it sideways, make it easier to see for me. And I think it'll be easier for you too. Now for this album, the cover, um, I did the flap where it folds over a little bit, and there's also a flap that I made that is my side closure where they meet on the side so it doesn't even look like you have a flap. So for the cover video, um, I'm not going to do that on film because you can make the cover over on a Christmas Carol. My tutorial for that, just scroll through towards the end and you're going to find the cover. And you're going to make that cover the exact same way. But you're going to make it, of course, to fit this album. And I'll give you the dimensions. Because in the video I did it a little bit smaller. But it's really easy to just adjust your chipboard. And you're going to attach your pages the exact same way as I attached it in the Christmas Carol tutorial. And the exact same um, hinge, hinge system. Okay, so once you get all your corners mitered, and get those stuck down. Now let's bring this back really quick as we're putting these down. I forgot. Now the reason I'm taking the tape off the bottom to bring my flaps up, putting it upside down, I want to be able to get a truer look. And by bringing the bottom flap up, that helps, helps me see that. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm just basically checking this side and this side. Oh, wait a minute, we can't put this down yet. Glad we didn't go that far. Now, you want to move these off to the side because I just messed up. And let's go ahead and put our pattern paper down. And I almost messed that one up. Let me cut that really quick. Okay. 
And when I'm doing pockets on top of pattern paper, I do try to use um, the lesser pattern so that we're not, because we're going to be hiding it anyway. Check. I may have to trim this a hair more. Nope, looks good. Eat the edges, put it down. Then we can put our pockets down. And I am going to start putting a warning. I'll do it with this video that um, when you're making my tutorials, you need to <laughs> don't put anything down until I put anything down just in case I do this and forget to put um, the pattern paper down where it needs to go. for me to see down this bright yellow so I can see my edges there we go much better now this is going to be a lot easier to see We can lay these back down. This little guy will just go in the center wherever I put these. Okay. He needs to come down a hair. This one, you know, will fall into place. I'm just trying to get my spacing. Take my pencil and just make a little tiny mark. What I want to do is, where my mark is, and I'm bringing this almost to the very top. Now I'll do the same over here. Kind of eyeballing. It's really that's kind of hard to to measure. So I'm just kind of using my eyeballs. Get your top even. Now this little guy, he's just going to go kind of in the middle with the same, hopefully, spacing in between. But let's bring him up towards the top with the others. And it is, it's going to be, it's off a hair, but that's crafts. It, it doesn't um, hurt anything. Now, let me tell you, though, if you get these down and you find the spacing's just terrible, you hate it, um, you're not lost. Just take your, your, take a piece of pattern paper. So say you put it down, pulled it up, maybe you ruined it. Then you just measure your pattern paper from 
whatever that pocket to that pocket is, then you're going to lay a piece of pattern paper right on top of there. Okay? And what happens is, I wish I had a smaller piece. It's really cool. So you're going to cover it. It's going to look like one pocket now across there, but you'll still have your uh, individual pockets. So if you've done something and it's just not the way you like it, don't fret because now you can just add a piece of paper on top. No one will know and you'll still have those three little pockets. So especially if you're just new to crafting, there's going to be accidents, but there's always a way to fix them. Now for the little tags, let me show you. this is where um, they are little. They're two and a quarter. And before a little thing here, they're two and a quarter by two and three fourths. Now remember when we cut out that very first one, what I did is I cut out a bunch of the patterned ones. So that's what these are. And that's what my toppers are. So just like in the very beginning, if you want to do it with pattern, excuse me, pattern paper, you can cut the whole thing and fold it in half. So you just take the whole thing if you want to do it um, just with one. Score in the middle as best as possible. It won't be perfect. And then you can just kind of match things up. But the score line just kind of breaks the paper and makes it a, a little easier. To, well, depending on your paper. So that also gives it extra strength. Then you can fold it in half. Um, then, you, of course, you'll want to use your adhesive. Another way is you can turn it upside down here on the edge. There you go. And you can actually have it upside down like that. Um, I, I had done separate ones because I these came from when I did the pattern paper to fit on that first pocket we did. So I just cut a few more and then you just put them at the top. And there you have this little uh, pull tab to go inside those pockets. Now, let me, I'm just putting, sorry, I'm just putting this back before I lose it. Um, like I mentioned, we, we still have our double pockets in here to make, but um, for the cover, well, let's make the pockets and we'll get there. So what I did here, just like we made our other, we just got done making our double pockets. So I took two scraps, doesn't matter which ones. So I'm gonna cut them at nine. Actually, that one's not wide enough. Let me find a wider one. I'm going to cut it at nine. Cut this one at nine. And I had cut um, a decorative edge on that for, on that top one. And grab that one. Now, when I make um, when I make pockets and I want a decorative edge, I don't like to use one that's too fragile. Like you'll see a lot of videos, and they have used a really fragile uh, design well it's going to come apart it is going to tear eventually as you're pulling pockets in and out so for this one this one's a little more hardy there's really nothing loose that comes off you know the little decorative like I have a heart one the hearts are always coming off so I did this um, top pocket and see the tags can be bigger because they have a lot further down to go. Oh, and then this, when I did these, again, was the leftover piece. And then I just put it down in. And I made the little pull tab. Again, you can set it if you're using it for your sides, tap mats, to pull out of the pages. Then you just can use it that way. If you want, and when they pull out the mats, they'll have that to grab a hold of. You can do a lot of fun things with your stamps, I mean with your punches. So let's go ahead and let's make those pockets. 
And the first thing I'm going to do, though, we cut these at nine, and so I'm going to go ahead and punch this one. But first, I'm going to score this one. I'm telling you, my brain today is just hopping way ahead. So, the first one will be the one I punch. And for the double pockets, it's where I only score the first one at one half at each end. Now for my bottom pocket, I'll do the three score lines. I'm telling you, the temperature has dropped. And when I, you know, stopped the video and I had to take a break and came back in, um, it's, it's not even 40. 40 some degrees outside here in, up in the mountains and I'm freezing absolutely absolutely freezing okay I might be out of breath sorry I had to turn off the camera hubby locked himself out back good thing for cell phones okay so we've got the three sides so I'm going to go ahead and punch starting in the middle And I'm just going to punch right over the top. You know, I was talking about how cold it got. It was like we had fall for a week and then instant freezing. So my hands don't want to, still don't want to work now that I went back outside. Okay. I punch out of the way. Now I'm just going to do these as normal. I do want to go ahead and fold these up so I can check the size and so I can also see where I want to put, put them. And you don't have to put them this way. You can have another set like this if you want. So I'll lay that down first. And you could connect these two together, then lay them down. Whatever is easier. Let's see. Now, one thing I'm checking for, because I don't take my paper all the way down, I do want to have my magnet where it's going to be covered with paper so it won't catch on any tags, and that looks good. Now with our 3 eighths of an inch score tape. And I am going to miter these corners right over um, my decorative punch, just like I would normally. So our corners are now mitered. Um, I'm going to leave that on. I don't want my pocket to stick down. That just realization hit me. I'll take that off when I put the pattern paper down. And you know, I'm really getting excited to get the pattern paper on my pages because of that new new one I'm using from Bow Bunny is just adorable. Whoops. Some, some pocket just is a little long apparently I should have there we go. but because I pushed it made it go where I want we're just fine and you could do both edges if you wanted I didn't I to be honest with you I don't know why I didn't on the other one and I think I will go ahead 
and do both of them for this one. I can't remember if there was a reason or if I just, you know, did it that way just because. underneath there. Okay, let's go ahead and put our score tape on. Now another reason I like this punch is see these holes? I have thread ribbon through there before also. This is a fun punch. You can do a lot with this one. And you can also put rhinestones on like each of these holes and it really decorates. It's just a really fun all around punch that's a good one to have. So I'm going to go ahead and miter on my corners, doing that over the garbage. So I think this album, doing this as a tutorial, was a good, good choice because you've now seen how to do a waterfall. You've seen how to do some different little pockets so you can incorporate uh, pockets in other projects. Um, you've seen how to put on all different kinds of flaps, basically, and how to size them. So I hope, especially if you're a beginner, this helped and you were able to maybe learn something that's new because I know when I make my albums every time I do something different that I teach myself a different way to do it so it comes out better and that's the whole thing it's just one big learning experience every time I make an album or a project Okay, I like the double bubbles. That looks really, it'll look really cute with the Christmas paper. So that will close. And then all I have left to do is cut my little tags. And you have lots of little pieces left for that. And I gave you that size. So we have, let's just go back over really quick of what we have. So um, we started here and our first page was the pocket that we made and then we've got our little flaps here and then I do believe this will be right next to it that was our other cute little pockets and then when we turn it move this, we have our coordinating pockets with our slit that was fun to make last night <laughs> here we have our waterfall and then we have our pop-up page or pop open page or there we go no that goes that way and then we have our double pocket or single pocket whichever one you chose and then we have our little three pockets with the double pocket so we have got a really cute album and there's the five pages. Now, if you want to do six pages, uh, let me show you. I did was making another album and I ended up tearing it apart because I really got frustrated. It was a boxed album, so I actually tore it apart. But I was making the same concept, but with Home Sweet Home paper. So I made a pocket here and I actually did two of them. So there's one in the front and one in the back. So if you wanted to add six pages to this, then you could go ahead and put a pocket in the front and then a pocket in the back would be good. So if you're a six pager now, um, let me tell you really quick why I do five pages, especially for craft fairs. Um, for craft fairs, you want to do as many albums. Oh, that's right, we've got pockets. But you want to do as many albums quickly, but as decorative as possible and when you cut out that six page not only does it cut down on paper it will also cut down on your 
um, time. But still, do you see this? You still come out with a nice full album. And it's just, you'll have plenty of different uh, pages to work with. Now, I'm, I was telling you for the cover, I want you to watch my Christmas Carol tutorial and I do an album cover in there because I'm not quite going to make the cover yet and I know you don't want to wait for this but if you go to my a Christmas Carol tutorial I show you how to make the cover but I'm going to tell you on the chipboard sizes so you're going to cut two pieces of chipboard that are eight and a half by eight and a half okay now your spine because we did three eighths of an inch you need to cut it at about uh, two and a half. So you're going to have a two and a half inch spine, and you need a two and inch, two and a half inch spine on this end if you're going to make this flip over. So you need two pieces right here. Bring this up. So you need a two and a half here and a two and a half here by eight and a half. Then you're going to need this eight and a half inch long. And I made mine at three and a quarter inches wide. Now let me tell you, when it comes to this piece, you can, when you make this piece, you can have this piece as wide as your book if you want, a double cover. You can make it even shorter. I wouldn't go too short. You're gonna have trouble placing your magnets. Um, you can go in the middle of the book. Um, now on my Christmas Carol, um, I believe there's a flap over like this. Sorry, but it's really close. So make sure though you follow these measurements. Two eight and a half by eight and a half pieces of chipboard. Two eight and a half by two and a half for your these two spines. And then an eight and a half by three and a quarter for this piece. Now there's also the tutorial. There's also this one. This cover um, is on my Rare Oddities, the Hingeless Page tutorial, or Hingeless, uh, yeah, Hingeless Pages. Now, I'm, I show a new way to make your, your closure, which, can you see, there's not a flap over, you don't have to have ribbon ties, but it closes here on the side, and there went the magnets, so I didn't tape them down, but that's okay. I have a better view, because this one isn't done. So here, in the... Hingeless page tutorial, I show you how to make this side closure tight. I'm still working on this album. So you can make this type of closure. You can make this fold over closure following the Christmas one. And so you'll have some choices. Now, let me tell you, another thing to do is just totally leave off this second hinge and this flap and then you'll just have your normal cover and you can put your ribbon ties on it so if you just want a normal cover but just see how nice with that three eighths of an inch gusset even if you just make this a normal cover it's going to be closed it lays flat it lays nice even with lots and lots of pockets tags and embellishments so I love the three eighths of an inch hinge so you can make it anyway but watch those either video and I will also remember to put the links when this loads up to YouTube. Because if I stop to do that, I won't get this video up there. And I'm going to go ahead and continue on just decorating my pages. And also in those two, in the Christmas Carol video, it shows you how to attach your pages to the hinges. And it shows you how to make your hinge. And I'm going to show you real quick about your hinge. So we have a, an 8-inch page. So I cut my... I'm going to cut my paper for my hinges at seven and seven eighths by 12. And I'll, that, you're gonna follow the video from there on how to make the hinge, you're gonna make it identical. But you wanna make it seven and seven eighths by 12. And then you'll score it identical to the way I score it on my A Christmas Carol mini album by Graphic 45. And it will show you how to put the pages on. We will be putting the pages on the exact same way as this book. And of course, if you have any trouble, I am always available. You can find me. 
I will answer. I always, it comes through my phone. I will check my messages if you leave it here on YouTube. Or I am on Facebook under Country Craft Creations and Hooper. And you can message me through there. It goes right to my phone and I will answer you really fast, I promise. So I hope you enjoyed making the pages. And um, I'll show you the book when it's all decorated. And I'd love to see yours when it's finished too. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.